Welcome, dear friends, to the Mr. Jazzy podcast. And today's episode is called "The Journey of Devotion." We're joining hands with Manu Am, a yogi, a musician, and a devoted soul who walks the path of heart and spirit. With the blessing of the teachers, let's embark on this journey together, with open hearts and open minds. And like many of us on this path, Manu Am found his way through the dance of life, discovering that it's in our day-to-day work and experiences where true wisdom lies. His story, woven with the threads of Bhakti Yoga, teaches us that devotion is more than just a practice. It is, it is a way of living, loving, and being. In this episode, Manu Am shares his insights into the guru-student relationship, a bond that transcends the usual mellow, dramatic, and cleanliness in relationships, and touches the divine. Through his stories, I trust that we can see a reflection of our own journey towards inner truth. We will dive into the essence of being true to ourselves. Aligning our actions, words, and thoughts in a way that creates harmony and peace. Manu Am's life is a beautiful symphony of these truths, where his spiritual music and yogi practice merge to form a melody of the soul. So let's sit back, relax, and enter the journey of devotion, love, and truth with Manu Am. Inspired by the teachings of Bhagwanji, this conversation is a step on our spiritual path. If you are searching for inner peace and a deeper understanding of life's journey, let the gentle music of Manuam be your guide. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today we're so excited to have Manuamji to be here with us today. So, Manuam. Thank you so much for taking the time, and、uh, we would like you to say hi to our audience and maybe take some time to introduce yourself. What is your gift to the、um, universe, and、uh, what brought you on this journey? Hi, thank you so much for the invitation. I feel so proud for that. And、uh, yes, well, if if no one, if there is someone here、uh, that don't know me. First, first of all, I'm from Spain, so forgive my Spanish. Sometimes it's not the best Spanish,、uh, the best English.、Um, but um, so,、uh, why I am here? Why, why I have a place here to talk with you about yoga and music in yoga? It's because I am a bhakti yoga practitioner. <laughs> This is a path of yoga which is not so known. I, I'm sure we will talk about it a little bit today. Uh, it's not a physical yoga; it's a mental yoga. And I am in I am in this in this path from two thousand two thousand six when I met my guruji in Varanasi, India.、Uh, he introduced me in this path of uh, uh, I would say yoga, but it's more about spirituality.、Mm. And now I. Maybe we can talk also about which is the difference between yoga and spirituality. Uh, so uh, through my guruji, I, I, I went into this、um, spirituality path, and I took yoga, bhakti yoga, as my tool to reach、uh, peace. And、uh, and bhakti yoga have、uh, the center of the practice of this bhakti remains to to chanting. And to mantra. So through this, I I start uh, um, playing and、uh, becoming someone in the scenes of、uh, mantra in in the world music. <clears throat> But my roots are spirituality and my relation with、uh, Bhagwan, with my Guru, and that's why I'm here. To to share about it a little bit, and hopefully maybe it's useful for someone. Absolutely, Manuam. 
G, I think, and I trust that this conversation today will be productive, will be meaningful to for the listeners out there. And to follow up with what you're saying, the bhakti yoga you mentioned, from my understanding, it means the path of devotion, which is the method of attaining self-realization through love and love recollection of the guru or the god. And uh, your method is through chanting and music in a very devotional way. Is that... I know I'm using a lot of like brain, you know, like the the mind here, but but um, I, does that make sense? What I said? Yeah, yeah, it has sense. Uh, I I am a little bit uh, reveal reveal about mm -hmm. uh, uh, defining bhakti like a devotional path. I'm gonna explain myself. It is a devotional path, of course. It's the yoga of devotion, but uh, in the same way, when we go to sleep, we don't sleep, but what we do is to provide ourselves a condition so we fall into sleep state. Devotion is more or less the same. It's not something that you do. It's something that happens to you when you provide yourself the conditions to make it happen. So the practice of Bhakti Yoga a Bhakti Yoga practitioner, uh, what we do is more about surrendering than being a devotee. While we surrender, we become devotees. <clears throat> we, we go into devotion. But what, what, what we can do as a human being is surrender and keep surrendering all the time. So it's for, for, for me, it's more about the path of surrendering than the path right. of devotion. You know what I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, personally, I've been on this path for, although not as much time as, as you have been, but um, um, I have a book right next to me right now. I have an autobiography of a yogi. Hmm. I have the Gita right next to me, and I've read also the more newer classic, like uh, Letting Go by David Hawkins, Power of Now, and... Hmm. I really also, from my practice as well, even in meditation, it's um, there's one of the teacher from Canada, his name is Dan, and he mentioned that meditation mm -hmm. is actually just the dropping off of the mind and body so that all those things fade away so that you are surrender yourself to be ready to perceive or to be one with what is already there. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's draw a connection with what you have just mentioned it, it, for me it seems like uh the truth or the unconditional love is always there and however we shall um all through our practice we need to essentially my understanding is like clean the vessel so that we can see through the well and then we realize that it, the water which is the divine love is always there within us all along so that's my understanding however um Personally, I'm super curious, and I'm sure a lot of audience out there as well. Um, the story of meeting the guru is always exciting. From Ramdas talk about how he met his guru, <clears throat> and uh, Guru Ganesha mentioned um, as well in the past. So, uh, <clears throat> Manuel, would you mind to tell us your story when it comes to meeting with your guru? Like, were you? Did you feel you're like in? Barcelona at the time, you feel the need that you just want to hop on the plane to go to India, or please tell us what, um, how did that happen? Yeah. Well, yes, uh, Guru is something unexpected always. No? Uh, I mean, I wasn't going to India to found, uh, to make a relationship with Guru. Uh, I was, I, I did know about someone that after it became my Guruji. Uh, whom was a man very special, very, very special in so many, in so many ways. And, and that moment in my life, I was, I don't remember, maybe 22, 23, right. something right. like that. Right. And uh, I was so depressed. I, I didn't know it or I, I didn't want to recognize it. 
I uh, yoga came to my life before because my mom is a yoga master. She's a Kundalini oh. yoga master. Right. And uh, she started with uh, this uh, practice and after that becoming a, a teacher training and uh, the owner of a yoga school, important yoga school in Barcelona. Right. But all this started when I was 15. Right. Um, so my my um, when I when I was a teenager, uh, all this information came to me. Osho, uh, well, Patanjali, uh, Vedanta, Bhagavad Gita, all these type of books came into my life, and I, I started reading it, and I I, te I took that knowledge. After that, uh, my mom started to be a known person in Barcelona because of yoga and doing festivals and retreats, and, and I was involved in that, and I had that knowledge, but I didn't practice. So I was in that point where I, I, I built a, a mask mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. a yogi, a right. very young one. Yeah, but uh, it seems it seems that I know a lot about spirituality. Even I was very young, but inside of me, I was very sad and depressed. And the challenging thing was at that moment that that I couldn't, I, I had not the strength to show it out to 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 make the people know that I wasn't happy because I was the son of a yoga master and and she was known and well. This was my environment, so my ego doesn't allow me to show that outside. So at the moment that uh, at that at, at that moment I was in a relationship with a woman that after a while became the mother of my son. Uh, now we are not anymore together, but at that moment she went to India. She found that man, and and when she came back, she came with this new hey, this man is. Absolutely amazing. You should know him. And I don't know why. I follow my intuition, or maybe it's that because my life was so empty inside of me that this claims my attention. Like, hey, let's see what happened then. And that, and that's why we we I t I took the direction to India. So it happened in, in 2006 when I, I arrived there. It just took about 20 seconds, one minute, that become, being with him, that uh, I felt a very, very deep love sensation uh, inside of me. That, and that love wasn't sweet. That love was more about Shiva. That love was crushing me inside, like broken, breaking uh, a lot of these masks that I built. So wasn't easy. I'm I'm just trying to say that when I'm when we say love, sometimes we don't know what we are talking about. I'm not talking about romantic love. I'm talking about a power that it just took one minute being with him that. His power came inside of me and breaks everything. And then, yeah, it's a long story. Maybe <laughs> I should stop here. But uh, the, 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 what I can say is that from that moment, I knew that my life was uh, start to be completely attached to this man, to this character. Um, so I don't know how mu how much is in the balance of destiny, karma, or own decision. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot say. Right, right, absolutely. Um, Manu, um, you when you are sharing your story about back then that you were depressed, that you didn't feel good. And which is quite challenging, right? Because supposedly, according to the culture condition, that as a son, 
in the house of a yogi and especially your mom at the time that she's so influential right and, and then it seems like according to how logic works that you're supposed to be the golden child right just like <laughs> vibrating with love and always happy all the time but i think exactly um that your situation then reminds me of a sri ramakrishna quote because i believe that the quote goes like this that do not seek illumination unless you seek it as a man whose hair is on fire seeks a pond which is sometimes really uh, myself can relate i'm sure the audience potentially too that a lot of times there needs to have a dark night of the soul or rock bottom for us mm. to be able to want to like eagerly from our soul and from our mind as well now okay now it's time to make a change so however well, actually please um <laughs> many things come <laughs> yeah yes absolutely so so i'm actually curious like um could you tell us more in detail about exactly the day or um the moment when you met your guru you, you mentioned that you met him and then within seconds or even a minute you knew that you know mm. in a western way which say that you know um or spanish like uh he is la verdad you know or he's a real deal right um like did you go there with your um like uh, um ex-girlfriend at the time did she guide uh guide to your guru for you or or she just told you like go here and look for this guy and you went there on your own in india and i don't know what yes we we built uh, a group of people we went together and uh this uh, the the my guruji have a society it's called international Vedan society and uh, they are mostly in calcutta but they have an ashram in baranasi which is uh, for the people that doesn't know, it's center North India. It's between Delhi and Calcutta in the middle. And Varanasi is a holy city and a very ancient city. And then they they uh, organize a convention in Varanasi. So many devotees from Calcutta move to Varanasi and the ashram in Varanasi that day becomes the center of the of the organization. And and so. We 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 arrived there, and we are we was in the in that building that they rented for the occasion, waiting for him, and from that building we we could see the street outside through a long path. Right. So I, I, we were we were there, quite simple, easy, like waiting. If, right. I mean, for me it wasn't that special at that moment. For me, the special thing at that moment was India, which is amazing. <laughs> the flavors. Yeah. The, 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 that, was, the, the, that was your first time, right? Yeah. So right. I, I've been. In, I was young. I was in India. I was amazed and and a little bit scared <laughs> because of of the noise yeah. and the, the amount of people and the dirtiness. It was 2006. Now, if you travel India, it's cleanest than then. But at that moment, it was whoa, like a, a little bit scary for me also interesting scary so I, I was distracted i wasn't i i knew that he was coming and i knew that he was the met the the reason why i was traveling in india but somehow you know how mind works you just just get, get distracted the mind always play tricks right yeah so i was talking there we was waiting but some something inside of me uh, claim my attention because the swamis were they wasn't distracted they was one was with the minidangam here the other one was watching the the mobile if the, because waiting for for the message that he's arriving no so watching the mobile so they they were like hey he's coming i was distracted right. this is the truth right right so but at that moment uh, some uh, in, in there was a moment when the mini dangam start playing and they start chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare and then oh yeah. what is happening here and and i, I watched uh, out uh, the street to this long path and i saw him uh, going out from a car and start walking through this path and and 
at the moment that the his he started coming from this path, the people, the Indian people were whom they was doing seva inside, like cleaning and cooking, and they they came out like start kept and, and start chanting also. And 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 so he arrived and, and, and we all surrounded him chanting and we went inside to a hall, a big hall, and uh, and and he's he stopped in the middle of a, a, a circle, and we start we circled him, and we kept chanting, and that that all this magic thing happening was so mm, it crushed me. I don't know why, but well, I now I know why. But at that, at that moment, I didn't know why. It was like, what is happening? It's, we are just chanting. <laughs> and, yeah. And uh, uh, like yeah. I, I remember the sensation was like a war, warm drop of oil inside of my mind. Right. And, uh, right. And when, once this drop came inside of my mind, this drop had a message which was, I want to become like him. And and this message came very deep inside me. And many things happened. Right. Since then, I, we spent one month with him. Morning and evening, morning and evening. And meditating, chanting, and attaining satsang. But the most uh, important uh, gift that I take from that days is that uh, to receive his attention and to to mingle this reception of his attention with my attention to him. This is so powerful. Because through these two attentions connecting, that you build a bridge. And uh, I could receive an experience of spirituality through that bridge, which wasn't anymore just information, just books, just knowledge. Knowledge is okay, but if it's empty, if this knowledge doesn't don't come with an experience, then it's just knowledge. It's just information. And th this is a huge difference. And this is w one of the biggest differences I received from before when I was just taking information to that moment when I start knowing, being, not knowing, being, being, being that information. So that to, to pass from knowing to just knowing to be, this is the thing, right. and I, I'm, I'm finishing because because I want to be clear about this. Uh, this we do it just because of suffering. I mean, spirituality is our our nature. It's not something that we have to build. Or there's not th nothing that we have to to create. We are spiritual beings but we are suffering that's because of ignorance so spirituality is to cross this gap through ignorance to 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 uh, wisdom or darkness to light or that's why the guru in the path of bhakti yoga is very useful because guru is the the window from from where the light passes through if guru doesn't allow if you you should be allowed to uh, realize god through guru so guru needs to be uh, like a crystal uh, 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 like a vidrio, yeah, how to say it in yeah, 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 uh, yeah, like a crystal, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if guru doesn't allow you to 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 see God because guru the ego of that guru is huge, then it's not guru. Guru is when it's it's the ego is not there is no ego. You can pass through. 
Right. It's beautiful. This is how I, I receive it. Right, right. Manu Amji, that's beautiful. Uh, what you mentioned to me that the hot drop of oil into your mind reminds me of, um, um, again, uh, excuse me out here, I'm using like concepts and words, try to pinpoint the experience, which is, uh, you know, fingers pointing towards the moon. But, um, you know, as mm. we're doing a podcast, sometimes we need like a place to stand, right? Like, like of course, foundation. of course, I'm worried. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which which is, um for me, it reminds me of a uh, Guru Kripa, which is the grace of the guru uh, in that moment that's mm -hmm. um, of the di divine grace through the guru. And um, so, so yeah, that, that sounds absolutely beautiful. So again, follow up question when it comes to that day, when you met him, that experience, right? Like it happened when you were chanting, this was before he even talked to you or addressed to you in person, correct? No talking. And, 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 and then could you tell us the, the first time when you make eye contact or when you start uh, have a conversation with him, then I can imagine this already, the group creep already happened without, you know, you two make eye contact or talking. Then I can only imagine what would it be like when you two have a conversation or when you two make eye contact. So, yeah, first of all, I that? just wanted to advise that uh, he passed away few months ago so I, I i if you feel i i get uh, emotion from by talking about him it's just because of this Absolutely. i am okay it's i am love. okay it's i am not in a deep i am not anymore depressed <laughs> it's not a drama thing but it's just like a, it's um, of course yeah um yes i remember i remember <laughs> Uh, he he sat on on the he sat and and we 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 on a chair and we was on the floor uh, and then he he could call at me hey Manu hey come come sit he was very straight talking like sit and I, I went I sat there uh, with him uh, watching him. And uh, and he uh, watched me, and he asked me, eh, "Huh? How are you?" Very easy question, or not? <laughs> because right. at that moment, I couldn't answer. It's like uh, all the 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 mind process. That it's about lying about one you know, who is. That's what we do in life. We are outside in the street. We're connect with people, and we're lying all the time. Right. We don't know. We don't do it because we are bad people, or what, because we are. <clears throat> I don't know. We have bad intentions. No, it's just because we are afraid. Uh, so normally we say good, more or less. Yes. Okay. Right. We, we yeah. give an, a short answer. Yes. But when you are in front of the truth, uh, 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 eyes, which uh, uh, soul uh, presence that uh, is uh, tra trans transparent. How to say it in English? Transparent. Um, it's, it's the same. It's the same. It's transparent. 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 Yes. Yeah, when you are in front of the transparent uh, human being that is asking you, how are you? You cannot answer lying. You should say the truth. And and that moment was so impacting for me because I, I you can see I am I have the capacity of communication for me is very easy. <laughs> but <Yes. clears throat> through uh, it happened many years ago during during many years since the last maybe five, six years that I could really speak with him. Before, I couldn't. When I go in front of him, oh, Manu, come, sit. This situation happened to me many, many times, in many years. This was my, my satsang. Oh, that's, hey, sit. Uh, how are you? 
silence. I don't know how to answer. Okay, okay. But the flight was good. Did you did you have tea? Yes, yes, Guruji. Life was good. I had tea. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Now you can go. That's all. This is it. It wasn't about I'm gonna show you how is your mind. And after, yes, of course, what he did satsang. He talked about the nature of mind and, and how to meditate and this and that. This I could take it in internet. It's not the, the 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 most important thing that I take from my relation with him. It's more about this attention, silence and attention. I don't know if I answered your question or. I, yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I I have two follow up, totally totally Manuanji. I have two follow up questions. So <clears throat> so the first time he spoke something to you was that he asked you to come in front of him and sit mm -hmm. and he asked how are you that was the first time that that yes. you know you two have an interaction yes. okay cool how are you and, yes yes and <laughs> and w w what do you mean by um this uh attention like this attention from the guru like would you could you call it the the love that is one side is so piercing that it can see through all the mask that we have but also at the same time it's warm and unconditional would you um do you think that's um proper definition or what do you think uh or what do you yes. mean by this attention I, mean, I can give you an answer now i know a lot of things <laughs> i studied i studied uh different types of, I, I studied mostly at Vaita Vedanta and I had read Swami Vivekananda, Ramakrishna, of course, Sarada right. Devi, uh, I love Patanjali, point of view as well. Uh, right. So I can speak from there. But at the same yes. time, I feel I, maybe I can, I can give an uh, easier answer. How Bhagwan, how Guruji uh, explain it. Uh, once I, I was with him, and uh, I asked him, because he was always saying, yeah, love is the main thing. Hey, love is the main thing, always. And sometimes uh, when we was in a small amount of group of people with him in the satsang, always was a small because he was known. So the ashrams were small. We was maybe 10, 15 people with him. And, and wow. in, that, in that situation, he... Uh, felt confidence to say uh, you don't know nothing about love. Wow. Okay. So, Guruji, I asked him if love is the main thing and I don't know nothing about love, which I trust you, then how can I do it? How can I uh, dedicate my life to love, if I don't know what love is. Yeah. And then he answered that you should not, you, you will, you don't need to know what love is to dedicate your life to love because you don't do, love is not, is not something that you do, is something that passes through, through you. So you, what you just need to do is to allow love to pass through you. Then you will start realizing what love is and then how, how to do that. And, and, and he spoke to us about honesty. He told us that honesty is when my mind, my word, word my action is the same thing. When I align, do this align, then I build the path for love. And also, he explained us that love travels through your attention. What you attend, you are loving. Is that simple? So sometimes the question for us, for me, 
for a long time what was uh, why I don't feel it. I, the, the good thing about having a guru is that everything that he says for you is true. It's, you you don't discuss you don't discuss him. It's it's good because then he plants a seed about an inf with an information, and this you don't discuss this information. You try to understand this information, so you seek, no. <clears throat> and when I ask myself why I don't feel it, I uh, realize that I, my attention wasn't pure, wasn't honest. I, I, my mind was in one place, my attention was in another place, and my action was maybe in the place between. <laughs> so. Uh, I wasn't honest with my attention. At the moment that I, I, I re realized that, then love and feeling, the feeling, the, the realization of this love starts happening. And this is the, the thing that happened with him. When I was in front of him and he paid attention to me, he paid attention to me. Nothing else. It was just with me. Uh, wow. And, and, and this is, it, maybe if someone hears about what I'm saying now, maybe it's okay that it was, was a man paying attention. That's all. <laughs> but when, when you receive pure attention, it's not that uh, normal. What you feel, it's rare because it's not normal. It's comfortable because it's not, even it's rare, it's not rare <laughs> because it's part of us. What, it's, what you, you start feeling is something that it was inside of me. It wasn't like magic or uh, it was not a drug experience. It, it was normal. It's right. sometimes it's difficult to explain. Right, right, Under, uh, understood. But finally, now after a while, when I uh, start, uh, sorry, uh, when I start uh, studying Patanjali, I saw that this attention in yoga it's called dharana, and and this dharana is the main thing in yoga. I mean, this attention is the key of yoga. When you are a, a Kundalini yoga practitioner, you put your dharana in asana, pranayam, bandha, uh, mudra, mantra. When you are a, a shtangi yogi, you, you put your dharana in this vinyasa or this uh, uh, hatha yoga, asana practice. When you are a jnana yoga, you put your dharana in your thoughts, and to, to do a viveka, to, to discriminate your thoughts. And you put your dharana in the, in the old hooks, in the, the sacred texts. Uh, so everything, every part of yoga is about dharana, it's about attention. Uh, now it's very, it became very famous, this mindfulness. Yes. It's, it's not a secret, it's just about dharana. Bhakti yogis, we put our dharana in our guru. Right, right. Um, Manoamji, to follow up question, so when you mentioned that, when you realize that your thoughts and uh, your thoughts, your words and your action, that you align them, that then things begin to change. So I'm wondering, did your guru um give you any advice or do you have any advice for the listeners maybe they are young they're or they're new on the spiritual path or they want to something that they can take and use implementing their practice like how in this very you know digital age a lot of things going on a lot of posts on the internet um that how do we move forward in our day-to-day -day life align our thoughts, words, and actions at all times? Hmm. Well, he, he, of course, he gave us a lot of uh, uh, 
recommendations and uh, but uh, this uh, to be an honest man or to be a sincere and to dedicate your life to love is 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 for me is what I I for me is what sorry is what was more important to take uh, not I mean. Maybe in in some situation, in concrete situation, we can take. I, I sometimes take some tools, different tools that he gave me. But in general, the the thing is just about practicing love. But going one one step forward, the thing is about recognizing that we are suffering. This is this is everything. I mean, with Bhagwan Ji, I understood that spirituality is not about morality. It's not about becoming a good man or a good woman. It's not about that. This is what I learned. What I learned is that spirituality is just to because of. Uh, avoiding or uh, yeah suffering that's all so if someone is listening now and and this person uh, thinks about them himself i am not suffering okay then the, you don't need a spirituality <laughs> <clears throat> and this is a, a honest practice as well I, I always recommend people, as I do with myself, because Guruji recommends us, to think about which is my purpose, why I am doing what I am doing, why am I am waking this, uh, this, this time in the morning, why I work in the work I work, why I am relating with the people I am relating, why, which, what took me here, what's, what, why? I am okay with that. I am I am clear about my purpose. Okay, then keep on moving. You are okay. But if while you are asking yourself why I am here, why I am in this situation, am I good? Oh, Manu, come sit. How are you? How am I? I am feeling good. I am satisfied. I am okay. I am happy. I am in peace. Hmm. Not that much. Okay. Then is when the when the, the spirituality takes importance in your life. And for me, after this, what seventeen years practicing with him, eighteen years, I don't know. Uh, I can say that honesty to practice honesty. Is the one of the highest spirituality uh, uh, I don't take the English word to say <laughs> oh, no 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 uh, do, do, do you mean in Spanish okay, case no the the uh, central thing in this in the uh, subject in the spirituality can be totally honesty. Which is not asana, pranayam, mantra, Vedas, uh, Sanskrit, yoga. No, honesty. What I right. think, what I say, what I do. And if there is a difference, why there is a difference? And then it's challenging. Then is when life becomes challenging at the beginning. After not, but at the beginning, yeah. you need to you need to move some things. Yeah, in your life. Yeah, absolutely. It's very absolutely. interesting and very easy, and it's free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, Monomji, what you said reminds me of a quote from Lao Tzu, because I read a lot of his writings from the Tao Te Ching. Um, he said. 
this is translation version, obviously, but he said, be honest to those who are honest and be also honest to those who are not honest. And then honesty is attained. So mm. I really do think that for myself and for the audience out there, being honest and have integrity, be a person who keeps your word is very, very important. And mm. um, yeah, I would say that's definitely something that um, I have felt challenged with in the past, especially when I first moved to um, Spain here. As, as Manu Amji, you definitely understand, right? Like being in Spain versus, uh, for example, somewhere in Asia or some other part of the world that here sometimes people really, when they agree to say yes or do something, maybe they feel it in that moment. But maybe later on, let's say a week later, when it's about time to meet, when they don't feel like it, then they uh, then people just don't um, honor their, um, their agreements or their word anymore, which is definitely something uh, quite interesting. But that's also why I think that our work, whatever whatever we're doing here is important, right? So that we can create the space and hopefully have this impact um, on attention on love and honesty um, little by little like a ripple to impact more people so yeah Manu Amji and my question to you now is that how did your experience with your guru um, facilitate you with you being a amazing musician and we shouldn't be devoted with your music like did he mention something or um you just one day you just feel like it because i'm sure you've been playing guitar or playing uh, mu music for a long time right maybe you can tell uh, something a little bit with that well uh it's kind of weird i wasn't i i always of, of course i always being in my family, in my house, with my friends. Music was something central. But I wasn't never a good musician. I, I a little bit. I can chant. I can play simple chords. Uh, even today, mm, I am I am surrounded of amazing musicians, and I'm not. I am a simple guitar player and uh, I can chant. The difference is that uh, and yeah, of course, Guruji never, no, his sadhana, of course, yes, is uh, chant Hare Krishna, Maha Mantra, and, uh, and uh, that is a, another part of sadhana, of the, the instruction, spiritual instruction that he gave us, which is mingle with people, mingle, join with people, uh, be part of the world. Okay. And, uh, now, maybe it's not that much relevant, but at that moment, I was 23 years old. My girlfriend of that moment uh, was with me, also with uh, with him, and we had nothing here. I had no not the job or son or house or anything. Right, so right, right, right. why to come back Spain? And he was very clear about that. He said that go back, go back home, mingle with people, work, work join with the people and share. But he never specifies how to do it. You do it. Just do it. Uh, well, my relation with, the, which is the, the Paula, the mom of my son, now is good. We're friends, but we're not anymore together. It got broke just after my son's birth, which it was one year after knowing him, very, very fast. And, right, right. and so I, I was 26, 25, right. 26 years old. And yeah. suddenly I was not anymore with Paula, with a son and with Guru and alone. <laughs> and uh, at right. that moment, I realized that I needed to open a space in the yoga school of my mom to share. Uh, Maha Mantra and meditation for free. By doing this, I could uh, keep uh, at attached or joined or uh, mingled with uh, right. th this right. practice because before it was easy. I have it at home. 
once I, I quit from this relationship, I, 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 I had to create it. And, and I took this intuition, a decision through this intuition. It happened in 2008. I started with a pre meditation and, and chanting in happy yoga every Monday at 5 in the, morning, in, in the evening, 5 okay. p.m. Okay, till today. Nice. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, now, happy yoga is not, doesn't exist anymore, so it's not in happy yoga, but still uh, we are doing it. Right. Um, and at the first two years, no one came. So I, but I kept doing it. I go there, right. I open the space, I sat, right. I took the harmonium, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, meditation, okay, go. No right, one right, right. alone. Yeah. One year, yeah. two years. On the third year, two people came, then four people came, then 10 people came, then 20 people came, and grows, 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 grows. Right. Uh, and, and something happened there then. Why, why did people start coming? Because also I, I uh, went into a Kundalini yoga teacher training. I, uh, my mom's Kundalini yoga teacher training. So I, did, I didn't I did that because I wanted to be a Kundalini yoga teacher. But because in this, uh, by doing this, I could connect with people with the same interest of, like me. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and also in this Kundalini yoga environment, there is a lot of chanting, a lot of Sikh, Sikhism chanting. Right. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I love it. Mul Mantra, yeah. Sat Siri Ka, Rak, 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 yeah. I love yeah. it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I start yeah. chanting there in, in the classes, in, in between the classes, and, and something, something magical start happening then. I say it magical because I cannot understand it. Maybe it's not magic. Right. Right, but, uh, right, right. It was that the people felt so at attracted to my voice. It doesn't happen before. It started happening when my chanting was focused in mantra and spirituality and Bhagwan and Guruji. Right. When the chanting was focused in that, my voice changed. And people say, I cannot say it, but people say it through all through these years that they feel my voice inside their heart. They feel that the heart vibrates when they uh, uh, listen my voice. I cannot say this is my my technique, or it's it's something that had happened after knowing him and by focusing in him. So I always. Uh, gave the, the reason of this power to him. Uh, but I, I found in this situation, this, I, am, I am working in, uh, I am working for him. I am representing him. And this is changing me inside. My mind is being still. I am becoming him, like the drop, oil drop. Right. No? So to become him, I have to work for him, to think about him, and to give him the reason of my uh, improving, improvement. Not, not me, him. Right. This is surrendering. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, yes. And and it's very uh, sweet. Uh, it's not an intellectual path. It's <laughs> is about this, about sharing, about uh, uh, giving, and about non-taking. It's guru, just for the guru, always for the guru. <laughs> so yes, I, I could not stop it. I just could obey. Okay, which is the next part? Next part. How can I make this bigger? How can I make this? Okay, I he he 
He told me, mingle with people, uh, share. So if I mingle a lot, if I share a lot, more I share, it's more I am uh, doing his sadhana. Okay, how can I share more? How can I mingle more? <clears throat> That's why I start recording albums. That's why I start Spotify, YouTube, of course. No, That's why I start uh, moving around the world. I don't need it. I am okay here. Really, I I don't feel the need of uh, being in the spot, on the spotlight. I don't want it sometimes. But what is happening to me? Wow. And and uh, another thing is I feel it's like a next step, which is where I'm now, is that uh, I cannot uh, I cannot attain peace inside of me. If I don't feel peace, it's also outside of me. I mean, I cannot be in peace if my wife is not in peace, if my son is not in peace, if my mother is not in peace, if my partner is not in peace, if my neighbor is not in peace. So I, I, I feel it like this. Maybe I am wrong, but uh, my, my sensation, and that's why I accept to do this type of interviews or talking podcasts, my sensation is that peace is a worldly thing. Peace is about world. It's about everyone in peace. <laughs> it's a huge Absolutely. world. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's um, it's it's it's, it's a collective. It's always you know people always talk about collective consciousness and um, mm. it's because I mean it's called humanity for a reason, right? It's not like a human versus the humanity on its own. And, and ho however, Manu Amji, I also think that on the same note, that the work we, the yoga we do, the work that we have on ourself, ourselves, it's probably also one of the most important work to do because I realized that the moments that when I can be still and be at peace and be loving and wanting nothing from this person that in front of me, that I feel like those moments through my inner work, whether it's meditation or yoga or even go for a run or just being time in nature, I realize that the moments, the time I spend on working on myself allows that me be more in peace or be more empty. So that in the time that if the other person from the other side of the table, that they also want to be empty that I will be um, instrument for them to be empty as well. Versus mm -hmm. in the past, that uh, maybe when I was just beginning doing my inner work, that maybe the other side of the table, they want to uh, come up for air or they want to be empty, but I was so caught up into my role. So mm -hmm. when I was playing with my role, in the on, on the other hand, I wouldn't allow them to... Um, um, come up for air so that in this way mm. that if I were to cut it into my role then then which means that they would probably be cut up into their roles as well so I think from my end I think like um, that the work I could do for inner work or you know conducting hosting these kind of interviews or um, online yoga festivals and I think these works are also equally important of so course. that uh, yeah, I, I think I think actually now thinking out loud, I think it's yin and yang, right? Which is they're actually all connected. The, the black will turn to the white, and white turn to the turn to the black, which is the inner work um, that leads to peace, and the and then the transmission to the peace to the world. They're actually all interconnected. So yeah. that's my understanding. Um, yeah, I agree. Right. Right, right, right. right there are, right, there right. are two steps on the on the process, the two clear steps. There are more, but you can separate it into clear steps. The first one is self-care. When, when you start practicing yoga, spirituality, uh, it's because you are suffering so much. And that, at that moment, you cannot serve. You cannot share. It's better that you stop uh, having relationship with some people in your life. It's better to change things in your life. And it's very emotional and, and sensible moment of life. So that moment, it's better you concentrate on yourself and you be selfish. It's okay. You can just take care of yourself. Once you are 
and this is a sometimes is a difficult to know when but that's why i'm saying there is a moment that you can get attached to this selfish uh, process and and to do not realize that you should that you are okay <laughs> you you've been practicing so long now you start serving start start sharing start giving to the others even you are not enlightened like buddha even there is also still a, a, a um, of course um, samadhi to attain inside of you you are okay you are not any more ble bleeding and and, <laughs> and in that emotional uh, difficulties moment that you you've been your relationships changed your work changed your environment changed the way you related with your uh, uh, food or or life changed and and then you beca became you become uh, stronger powerful you start you start to have some cities okay then start working start serving this is the second step right. I, I am interested to share that to the people who is listening maybe you can do yourself your this question when where am i now I am bleeding, I am suffering so much, then ask help, then just uh, care, take care of yourself. Like when you are in a plane, and uh, hopefully that never happened to no one, the, the mask goes down. Right, yeah, the oxygen mask, yes. The, the first you, mask you have to put is your, your own mask. Right. And maybe you can help your neighbor, or your son, or right. your daughter, or anyone. But the first mask you have to put is yourself, your, your own mask. Right, right. <clears throat> Absolutely. So on that note, um, Manu Amji, mm -hmm. that's why I think that the online yoga festival that uh, we're planning is very important. And also, could you tell us a little bit about the projects you're working on? Because Guru Ganesha has mentioned to me that last year you guys... Um, Put together a in-person festival, and then I know that you are you have more coming up. Um, maybe you can tell us about your projects that um, things that you're working on, so that audience can support mm. and yeah. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, mention that Guru Ganesha is a it is a, a example for me. Is a inspiration. Is a uncle. Okay, so <laughs> Uncle Uncle Gigi, Uncle uh, Gigi, same for me, same for me, definitely. Yes, he's a a person which uh, is an example of uh, loving. Always, I always. I I uh, get emotion in my eyes when I think about him. Uh, I'm very thankful to him, very very thankful. Even we didn't had the chance to meet that much, but he always been so so kind, so so humble, so so easy. That I re I really give thanks to life that there, there is in the world people like him. First thing, too. Okay. yes. Then uh, my projects. Now I, we pass through as I told you, uh, very difficult year because of Guruji in his Mahasamadhi are passing away, and uh, we had to close our school. It was a tough Kali year. Like right, right, right. So, uh, is, sorry, follow up. Close your school where in Barcelona or in yes, India? Ha Happy Yoga is uh, my mom's school, but after all that amount of years, I, I could I can say also well our project and uh, uh, even it wasn't uh, my school; it was her school. Right. But yes, our family school was closed this year because crisis and changing and life and you know very difficult but the thing is that now we are going to a year which we will try to keep our work in a balance and not to try to uh, grow that much with uh, complicated projects even that we, we are doing a bhakti yoga immersion which is seven seven times we, we meet seven times online and presential we do two trips to India, to Baranasi. We take people there. We do, we do uh, 15 days uh, yoga vacational festival 
North Barcelona every August. The website is called festivalyoga.es. E -E -S. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and we, are, we will be traveling to Mexico and the United States on March. Also in Chicago and Guadalajara and Cancun to, to share there. And finally, we are always open to receive a lot of uh, offers from anyone who wants us anywhere through our website, manuom.com. But yes, our, our intention this year is to keep in this mood. And so the next year we will uh, again start with our Bhakti Yoga Fest that we did uh, the last year with Deva Premal and Ajit and uh, Gauravani and many of them. That's why we were talking with Gurganesha and Gurganesh Band for the next one. Um, the thing is that we are uh, promoting a lot of uh, events related to Bhakti because in this way we feel that we can connect with many, many more people that maybe don't know that they, they have a Bhakti feeling inside of them, but they don't know because they are Western and they, they didn't receive it. We, we are, we, we've been here in Spain, we've been teached to hate God because we had a lot of issues with church. A lot of people have a lot of trauma with how church right. treat them. So God right. is, a, is not a good topic here in Spain. Right. A this lot of fear, big, right? When people, yeah, this um, is a, an yeah. anger. And this is a big, a big gap. So that's why we work on not just promoting Manu Om's music, which please, uh, you can search us in Spotify or Amazon or YouTube or anywhere. We are everywhere. Uh, yeah. But also we try to uh, promote uh, events. We are doing a Bhakti Yoga retreat in Valencia in, in, in April. We are doing many things. You can see our agenda in the website. Uh, but even also, if you are listening this and you maybe have a yoga school in Galicia or Paris or Berlin or any any town anywhere, and you want us to go there to share in any way through kirtan, through workshop, through meditation, you can connect us. We can talk about it. Right. Right. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Manu Amji, maybe you can tell us that you, you, you mentioned that uh, in March, you and your team, you guys are going to go to like uh, Mexico and, and and America. And then in April, there's a um, a, yo a yoga festival, um, like a world war retreat in, in, in Valencia, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, in... Mexico, we're going to build, we are, we're building a retreat, but it's not our, we're just producing, producing it. So I'm, I cannot give so much details. Right. We, we, we will be, we will be giving these details in, in the future. Uh, we will go to right. Calcutta, uh, sorry, um, uh, Cancun, near Cancun, Cancun yeah. to, to do a yoga retreat there. Nice. After that, we go to Chicago because we are working with a shaman, a ayahuasca shaman. And uh, right. we share with them our yoga chantings while they are doing a medicine process. This is very interesting. Right, 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 right. Uh, cross, cross, crossover, you say. It. Oh, uh, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then... Ayahuasca we... in, uh, in, in Chicago, that's, that's, that's an mantra. interesting combination. From a Spanish yeah. guy. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, it's great. It's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With uh, we're we're we are doing this with my my violinist Sukhdev Ji, Sukhdev Prasad Mishra. He's a, a, a from the Mishra Garana of Varanasi, and he's a he's the eighth on the on the um, uh, lineage. Yeah, of violinists yeah. and sarangi players in his family. So he's okay. Wow, wow. he's a guru yeah. violin. So we are yeah, doing yeah, this yeah. with him there. And uh, after that, the last weekend of uh, March, we are going to El Pendulo. El Pendulo is a house in near Guadalajara in a, in a city it's right. called Tepatitlan. 
which is north right. north uh, west of Mexico. Uh, right. And there we're going to attain more ayahuasca. And after that, we're working in the in the festival uh, in that house. It's called El Pendulo. Last weekend of, of March. Right. And uh, in Valencia, right. we will be with working with uh, Govinde School in Valencia, uh, doing a Bhakti Yoga retreat where we will be spending all night chanting from Saturday to Sunday on the date 24, 26, 27, something like this. You can search it in my website. Uh, and there right. we will be sharing with uh, Lucas Spirit, uh, Carola Zafarana and man, many other Kirtanillas and mantra players from Spain where which we have a very rich people doing a lot of good things here in mostly in Barcelona and Valencia right absolutely well it sounds like uh, you have a, a very nice schedule for the spring over the world <laughs> and making positive impact Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, during the next episode, uh, Manuel, you must tell us how you could have uh, this life of doing exactly what you love, and also, you know, be able to travel and always connect with uh, with with other people. Because I would, I would imagine this is something a lot of um, young audience out there that a life that they would like to manifest. Mm. So that definitely mm. sounds interesting. Definitely sounds interesting. Indeed. Next episode, it sounds good. Absolutely. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. And uh, we'll also link here um, in the description of this podcast about the website, the information that you have mentioned, um, and Manomji's um, profile, and for example, YouTube, Spotify, YouTube Music, et cetera, et cetera, and his website as well. So make sure everybody go follow him and connect and uh, check them out because Manomji is definitely doing meaningful and uh, heart oriented work here in this, not only in Spain, but to the world. So we're so lucky to be able to be here with him and support him. And uh, Manu Amji, thank you so much for your time and energy and your authentic stories. I personally, for me, I feel like we're just scratching the surface here. Mm. We're just getting warm up with the conversation. And, um, but you, like you know, we might do it again. Do you allow me to close, to finish with a short prayer? Absolutely. Please do. Please do. Please do. Absolutely. That's because I was thinking about something like that too. Please. Hey, Krishna, Karuna, Sindho. Dina bando jagat pate ko peshaha gopi ka kanta kara tanto namostute hare krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Om Shanti 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 It's so beautiful. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Manu Amji and um Till next time, the next episode. We're so excited. We cannot wait to um, have you back here again. Um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in this episode of the Manifest Yoga podcast. And our dear guest is 
Manduamji. Make sure you guys check out his music across all platforms. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, till next time. Much love. Much love. I trust you enjoyed this episode titled "The Journey of Devotion with Manuam." As we wander through the conversation with Manuam today, I hope that we can take away that the remembrance of each story, each insight, as a mirror reflecting our own quest for understanding, love, peace, and connection with the world around us. His work in the spiritual community is not just his story, but a part of our collective story. A special shout out to Guru Ganesha, of course, for putting us together. And thank you so much for tuning in. Wherever you are in the world, be love, be peace. This is Mr. Jazzy. Till next time. Ser